All right, we're back out of the shop today. Uh, getting ready to start the camping season, I guess, with a razor. And I just wanted to go over real quick. I did get something new for the truck. Uh, I got a set of airlift uh, air springs. Uh, and mainly, I really have not had a problem with load with this Dodge 2500. Uh, the main issue I've had is, you know, just keeping uh, things level uh, with a dump trailer. Uh, it pulls just fine, um, but it's a whole lot easier to use a set of air springs to kind of just get everything perfect. And again, you know, I'm not having really any problems. Uh, I think the ride's a little bumpier than I'd like it to be. The truck's getting a little older. Uh, rear springs in the back need a little help uh, sometimes. Uh, I just wanted to mention, just so everybody understands, these really do not uh, increase the load capacity of your truck. And uh, I'm going to shoot another video after I get done with this uh, where I'm actually going to use my uh, load scale and uh, measure the tires. It won't be an exact science, but what I'd expect to happen is I'll actually end up with a little bit more pressure on the rear, um, which all my trailers, I think the heaviest pin weight or tongue weight that I have uh, is probably the fifth wheel. And I'm just shy of 2,000 pounds of pin weight. Uh, about 1980 with a full load of water which is within the capacity of this truck I think this one is uh, 2250 is what the uh, the bed capacity is on this truck so you don't ever want to exceed that but ideally um, especially when I'm going to Windrock and I'm, I'm towing uh, out there on 40 doing about you know 65 70 miles an hour uh, if a semi truck passes by, I can feel it. Um, it's not, you know, your typical trailer sway. Uh, let me kind of get some stuff here to demonstrate. Um, I'll use this box. So imagine this is your trailer. I'll actually use this flat side. And this is the tongue side. Uh, so basically, if you have a tow behind trailer and you, you end up with this lever and you end up with a lot of sway, and a lot of times that'll happen because your, your trailer is actually angled down. So you've got a lot of load on your front axle on your trailer and the rear axle on your truck. Um, I really don't have that problem with the dump trailer. Now, the fifth wheel is a little bit different story. Um, it's probably almost exactly level most of the time uh, with the exception of when you mash on the brake and when you mash on the brake all that that weight comes down and if you're going really fast uh, out on the interstate and again you know most trailer tires are only rated at 65 miles an hour so uh, I do try to take it easy but sometimes out on I-40 when semis are passing and that kind of thing you kind of got to run with the speed of traffic around 65 70 miles an hour just to keep from getting run over uh, and when you apply the brake or, or load up the rear end, uh, you actually end up, rather than being level, you end up with a little bit of weight on that front axle, uh, and the other end ends up being light. Um, and I've actually had to, you know, typically I'll, I'll load just a little bit of water in the fifth wheel, uh, even going to somewhere with full hookups, just uh, to kind of even it out. These airbags, that allow me to to adjust that uh, it'll also prevent a lot excuse me a lot of the downward force um, because it'll actually have a little bit more support in the rear you know again you don't really want to add these to hold uh, to like over overweight your truck the reason you want to add these is just kind of give you a little bit of level control I mean obviously they're popular they they now uh, I think you can get full air suspensions on the new Dodges uh, but we're going to add this real quick. There's tons of videos on how to install these. Uh, my particular application, if it helps you out, I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible. I have a 2010 Ram 2500 uh, Laramie uh, turbo diesel. Uh, a couple of differences on my truck that may be of interest is I actually have a uh, rail system, fifth wheel rail system installed in the truck. So there's a, some additional stuff beneath 
uh, that may that I may have to modify something or do something. I don't think I will, but and I'm also using a pull rod super glide, and this is a short bed truck, and that's why I have the the pull rod super glide, because basically what it does is it pushes the trailer back when you turn a turn a curve to make sure you don't hit the cab. Um, I really don't have any issues with my Puma. Uh, I could probably I would be fine uh, under most circumstances with just a standard hitch, but that just gives me a little bit extra. The other uh, thing, if you've watched one of my other videos, I pretty much got the ultimate tow setup on the for the tow behind. Uh, I don't tow a camper, but I do tow a big uh, 14,000 pound uh, dump trailer. And that is the Kurt system. So I've got like this big hitch. I've actually got two receivers. Uh, one's two inch and one's the class five size uh, hitch. And that's all rated at 20,000 pounds. This truck is not rated at towing 20,000 pounds, but the hitch is. Uh, so, those are some of the specialty things about this truck that may help you on an install if you happen to have uh, one of these trucks. Uh, I don't remember the year models, but I think it's it's pretty much that been that way 2008-ish to like 2013-ish. Uh, so this covers a lot of trucks. And again, kind of explaining why I'm installing this. Um, I don't know that I'll get it in this video, but it's probably the very next video that I do. Uh, will actually be uh, hooking the fifth wheel up and taking some weight measurements and seeing how this redistributes weight. Again, I'm not really super worried about the redistribution of weight. Um, as long as I don't add 400 pounds to the back of the truck, uh, I'll be okay. The main thing I'm looking at is just a little bit extra support and keeping the, uh, getting the truck. If not, it, right now it's almost perfectly level and I actually kind of want the back end to to be tilted up a degree or two at least uh, just to get the trailer uh, you know a little bit of weight on that back t back axle on the trailer uh, I think that'll prevent a lot of the issues I'm seeing out you know going really fast again you know 55 miles an hour out on a normal interstate no issues you get in a lot of traffic doing 70 miles an hour it gets it, it it's a little nerve-wracking uh, you want to you want to really pay attention to what's going on again like I've never felt like it was gonna lose control uh, but you know things move around when you don't expect it when a big semi comes by especially if they're going at a much higher speed because it's actually pushing the air the air coming off that trailer is actually pushing against my trailer uh, and it kind of offsets things a little bit and if you have if that trailer is just even just a little bit cocked up you get a little wag as they pass by which is a little uh, disconcerting and I think this is going to eliminate that anyway I'm going to get to it here Uh, again, I'm going to try to be as detailed as possible. I got this on Amazon. Uh, I'll put a link in the description. Um, Airlift has several. I know uh, several of the guys that I know run Firestone bags. I really don't have a preference. I've heard good things about both companies. Um, but I'll put a link for this particular one. Uh, it comes packaged. Uh, Amazon actually puts this in a box. And then you get the Airlift box. It arrived to me in perfect shape. Um, I know a lot of people are... I'm pretty particular about how it gets there. Um, as long as it gets there and it works, that's all I really care about. Uh, so there's a couple of parts. Basically, you've got the uh, cap to the airbag. You've got a bag here uh, that basically has the uh, the Schrader valve, and we've got the airbags. Um, relatively light. Uh, these are the the uh, I think these are called the ultimate. Uh, and basically what that means is internally in this airbag, uh, there's a jounce bumper. So you're taking off your rubber bumper uh, that's on the truck. Uh, and rather than just having this bag, you know, no, no real shock load, if you actually get all the way down to the axle, this actually has a jounce bumper on the inside. Okay, so there's the airbags. Uh, you've got mounting plates. Caps. I'm assuming this is what this is the bar that goes underneath the axle. You've got some big uh, U bolts. A relatively nice instruction manual. Uh, this is actually a nicely printed instruction manual with color illustrations, even. Uh, so that's kind of nice. Um, I did not get uh, the onboard compressor system. 
I probably will do something with this just because uh, uh, I'm pretty lazy in general as far as you know having to mess with the truck uh, just to tow something and uh, you know I don't want to have to mess with it you know if I haul some garbage off and I don't have any uh, air in the bags I don't want to have to you know fill up to haul a trailer so that those are nice systems to where you can uh, on the fly adjust uh, but for now uh, again, I'm prepping for, I've got a camping trip uh, planned for next week, and in the week immediately following that, I'll be at Windrock for several days. Um, so I want to have this ready for those trips. And the mounting plates. So th these are generally very simple. I've installed these on other trucks, um, and generally uh, you basically end up with uh, a plate that's bolted to the bottom which mounts to the axle and then you end up with a plate that bolts to the top uh, this is the air fitting if you're wondering top bottom this is the bottom this is the top air fittings here uh, and basically what happens is you basically bolt this plate assembly which you'll have a plate here and a plate here um, the part that goes on the axle will be on the bottom uh, the part that's on the top is a plate that bolts to another plate and that goes to where your uh, your little jounce bumper rubber uh, isolator uh, it, and basically what that does before you put these on if you're riding down the road and you hit something really hard and the axle comes up uh, that way it's not hitting the frame or it's not completely bottoming out um, it, it basically hits that rubber uh, uh, absorber um, and again these have those internally inside so we're going to remove the stock ones um, and, and start getting everything mounted Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, uh, I found a new product. Uh, if you've seen any of my videos before, uh, I generally use like uh, the Permatex style anises, uh, which is in a big can and it gets all over everything. I saw this the other day and picked some up and I've been using it quite a bit. I'll put a link to it in the description. Um, basically this is a anises and a stick. And it is nowhere near as messy <laughs> as the Permatex stuff. And basically you just, it, it works like uh, a tube of chapstick. Uh, it's a little bit harder. If you've ever used the, uh, the bottled stuff, it, it kind of gets gooey and, and almost liquidy and gets all over everything. This is relatively hard. Um, I actually put some uh, uh, bearing buddies this morning in, in, the, in my just tow behind trailer and used some of this on the... Uh, um, the bearing buddy before I hammered it in to keep it from uh, season up and where I could get it back off and this this stuff works great okay I'm just gonna get everything laid out here and then we'll we'll go to we'll actually follow through the instructions um, the main reason I'd recommend following through the instructions I've looked at other YouTube videos and I know a lot of people have had issues with torquing um, so I'm actually going to follow this and try to pretty much do this to the T mainly because I really like my truck and uh, I, I need this to work the first time out of the gate so I'm just going to take my time today and uh, try to go go and make sure I don't miss anything mainly okay I've kind of got everything laid out here um, there's basically four plates that are totally flat um, and there is a difference between the two one has a very large slot and one of these has a small slot I'll kind of show you here these are the small slot plates these are the large slot plates um, one cool thing uh, that is rarely seen is they actually have the part number stamped I don't know if you can see that but they also have uh, um, the date I'm assuming when this manufactured uh, so this one was manufactured 817 um, and the dates are in all of the uh, most of the the big hardware the smaller hardware uh, still has a, an actual part number uh, so that way you can look really quick and see what's different uh, that's the way I did it um, the instructions don't look too bad the first uh, step is actually removing the, jump, the bumpers on the truck uh, the little rubber bu bush bumper bushing things uh, that basically 
axle comes up and hits. We're not going to do that right now. Um, I'm actually going to start by assembling these first and then I'm going to crawl up underneath the truck. Main reason I'm doing that is it's been raining. Uh, it's probably rained for like a week. Um, so I'm kind of letting things dry off as much as I can before I actually get underneath the truck. And all of these are the same. These are the same part. Um, so obviously there's a large hole and that's where the uh, air fitting goes. Kind of show you that there. So it goes like that. There's not an air fitting on the bottom and these are placed the same way. Okay, it looks like the small slot, um, these small slots are actually going on what on top of the spring. So it's basically, it's not going to be perfectly lined up, but it should give you an idea. So that's what you want it to look like. Um, and there's two screws that go in the top. And then this plate will actually bolt to this large slot plate, which if you're following the instructions, this would already be installed. That's the first step is to take your uh, stock uh, bumpers off and replace that bumper with this plate. Uh, so these basically will end up bolting up. I don't know if that's correct. That should be the correct orientation, but um, it's kind of going to look something like that. Um, just pulling this stuff out of the bag. This is uh, a heat shield. Uh, so this you'll want to keep up with. I install this at the end. So all this stuff's kind of nicely packaged. I'm kind of impressed. It's all, you know, normally I just kind of throw everything in a bag, but this one's actually, uh, Almost bagged as the stages that you would install it, which is kind of neat. Uh, so this is our hardware bag. Uh, these are our uh, air adapters. Those screw up into the top there. But we're going to follow the instructions and uh, get all this assembled on top here. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to basically put these uh, air fittings in. Uh, it's pretty simple. It looks like you basically uh, do finger type plus one and a half turns. Uh, so I'm going to get those installed real quick uh, and get the uh, bolts in the top of these plates. Uh, those, the, the bolts that go on the top of the plates are torqued, uh, 20 foot pounds. Uh, interesting note, it actually says Torque to no more than 20 foot pounds. Uh, so we'll go probably slightly underneath that, like 18 or 19. Okay, we've got uh, the uh, frame jacked up. Um, got the first bumper off. This is what it looks like. It's pretty rusty. Uh, 15 millimeter bolt and uh, as you can see, that's kind of rusty too. I'm going to put some thread protected or something on, on the bolts before I put them back in. Uh, it, does, it does come with new bolts. Uh, it actually comes with these. Metric. Uh, you'll need a driver and a torque wrench. I think it's 30, 37 foot-pounds uh, on the bolts to hold the plates where the bumpers went. 
Uh, and this is a uh, six millimeter. And if you're wondering, this is what I was talking about before. See how easy, much easier the application is. You just kind of rub the threads down in it. Uh, it's a lot easier to control how much you're putting on. And it doesn't get all over you. Uh, when you install this, I'll do a, I'll do a shot uh, underneath the truck. It's kind of hard to move the camera, but uh, it's pretty obvious. You want the air fitting to point into inside the truck uh, towards the pumpkin. Uh, so you'll want to install both of these. This is going to go on the driver's side, uh, so it'll it'll get installed like that. Um, again, you know, pointing in into the truck on both sides. Just kind of wanted to give you a shot. Uh, you can kind of see how that's installed. I'll go down below. Uh, and show you what it looks like before I screw it up. Right now it's not tightened. Uh, so it's just kind of hanging there. This is down below. You can still see one of the screws are sticking out uh, and the plate's laying down on it. But basically it goes right where that bump stop goes. Uh, I haven't removed the other side yet. It's still over there. Uh, but that's what you. this is what you have to take off and you replace it with this plate. And again, that notch needs to be pointed in towards the pumpkin. Okay, I've got the airbags uh, on. I'm gonna give you a shot of that. Um, one thing I'll say is you almost do need a special tool. Let me grab it real quick. One thing that will make the job a lot easier is a ratcheting uh, wrench. Uh, and where you'll need this at is you leave those uh, the lower spring or lower air spring bolts loose. Uh, and there's not a lot of room, so you've got the shock in the way and the other. And you get about that many clicks, and you can tighten. A socket won't fit, there's not enough room. Uh, this will be a lot quicker. Uh, I did try to use a, uh, a wrench with a box end. Uh, it would take forever. But again, uh, this is a 14 millimeter, that's what fits the uh, lower, lower bolts. Saves a lot of time. Uh, one thing that's taking me a little bit longer, um, for whatever reason, I've got all my parts laid out here. Uh, so I'm keeping track of everything. And uh, Airlift did not send the four nylock washers or nylock uh, nuts uh, that go on the, uh, actually there's more than four, uh, that go on the bolts that go through the through plate and all of the uh, uh, threaded rods and U-bolt. They sent the washers, they did not send the nuts. Uh, so I had some nuts, uh, luckily here in the shop, they were not nylock. Uh, hence I, I applied a liberal coating of red Loctite, all those are exposed, those exposed bolts. If I need to get them back off again, I can, uh, I can get that red Loctite off. Uh, but I definitely don't want those coming off uh, anytime soon. I really didn't want to uh, try to go source uh, some nuts at this point in the game. But anyway, uh, just as a pointer, 14 millimeter ratcheting wrench. Um, really saved a lot of time. Uh, and you know, make sure you got those bolts before you start. Um, I did a reasonable job about checking to make sure everything was there. And I just overlooked it. Uh, when I emptied that bag, I emptied it all right here and never saw those nuts. Um, and the washers were there. So I'm assuming that that just didn't make it in the bag. Uh, because all the washers were there and all the other hardware was there. Uh, anyway, I'm going to give you all a quick shot of the airbags installed. We're to the point in the instructions now. Um, we're going to be doing the airlines and the heat shield. Uh, one thing I'll note, 
Uh, you really want to pay really close attention to your brake lines. Uh, they give different instructions depending on what model truck that you have, uh, but it, you really need to check them. I didn't have a problem. All of my brake lines ended up on the inside of the bolt uh, rather than having to do a crisscross or be on the outside of the bolt. But on my passenger side, I did need to move that line just a little bit just to add it at some additional clearance. So it's something you want to check um, after you get the uh, bags tightened down. Uh, I noticed a couple of uh, other YouTubers that have done this install, uh, they ended up like bending their, uh, their uh, down bolts that came down. And I think I see why that might have happened. Um, it specifically tells you, basically you want to pull that U-bolt that attaches to the spring pack. Uh, you know, you want to get it tight and get it in and then loosen it again. And then you want to get everything squared up. I got mine squared up, tightened it evenly and my bolts are dead on straight. Um, I didn't have any trouble. Uh, and then I went back and actually tightened the U-bolts up. Again, you know, it took a little longer because I used red Loctite. Uh, a lot of that I didn't film uh, me doing simply because it shouldn't match what you're doing. You should you should have nylock washers in it, or nylock nuts and it should go a lot faster. Uh, I was kind of squirreling around trying to get a uh, thread locker on, on threads that you normally shouldn't have to do. Anyway, let me give you a shot and show you where we're at. Again, uh, we've got this uh, heat shield installed, our airline, and I'm gonna I'm gonna look around the truck. I have not decided yet exactly what I'm gonna do with these Schraders. Again, I'm probably gonna install a compressor system. Um, I think ideally, I would have actually preferred uh, just to have had a T and had one fitting. Uh, there's never gonna be a case where I want to you know offset load this truck. Uh, but we're gonna get to it and I'll show you where we're at right now. Okay, this is the bag installed uh, on the passenger side. I'm gonna kind of dip underneath here. And again, one thing you'll notice that those bolts, those would normally be nylocks. Um, and again, the ones I was short was the ones for these these and the uh, the plate bolts that are I'm gonna give you a shot there that bolt there but you can see the red Loctite those aren't coming off um, if I get worried about it, I'll either chase a nylock on there or I'll uh, just swap out the bolts one at a time or nuts one at a time won't be a big deal but I don't think it's gonna be a problem but anyway everything ended up being uh, this is really square and no, there's no bending Again, what you want to do is you want to tighten this U-bolt up and get this over, make sure this is seated, then loosen it, then get, then tighten this up. Um, I don't know if the camera's kind of skewing that there. But anyway, this to me is dead on. Uh, none of these bent. Uh, these are really even. I tighten these up uh, evenly. And the same thing on the U-bolts. After tightening this, tighten this U-bolt up, uh, and amazingly enough, I've had to do very little adjustment. I've got really perpendicular uh, alignment with the uh, pad, so it worked out really well. I was really happy. Um, again, this is the uh, where you'll need the 14 millimeter ratcheting uh, wrench. Uh, you can kind of see it's your space limited, and basically your wrench can move that far. So, um, highly recommend it. Okay, I've got the sh I've got the Schrader valves in. I ended up actually installing them in the holes uh, that were already in the bed on back on both both corners. Uh, it wasn't too bad to fish the wire, and I just used a big washer to uh, cover the space for the really big hole that's there. Um, well, next is the heat shield, and basically you want a half inch air gap. So what you have to do is you have to bend these tabs. You actually want to bend them twice. So you want to do like a little 45 right at the edge, and then another 45 to straighten it back out to put your clamps on uh, where the uh, air spring is really close to the exhaust or the closest to the exhaust it's not it's not really that close anyway I want to bend these up real quick best way to do it is kind of just bend it down at 45 as best you can and I kind of do a push-pull motion because my channel locks won't get all the way to this edge, but that's where I want it to bend. And then I'm going to come back in with the channel locks. Just stare at it from the side. 
and you want about I don't know, a half inch or so of a clearance like so so hopefully that makes sense and now we're going to install this uh, where the air springs the closest to the exhaust and this will uh, provide a little bit of heat shielding for that uh, be sure not to forget I have not connected up the other side of the Schrader uh, when you cut your hose um, I actually measured mine off to make sure they would all reach some people say cut it in half but I don't recommend doing that it's fairly short uh, it worked probably probably work okay for my application because I've got one on each side um, and they're uniform so that would work but if you're going to do something like up at the gas tank or, or run everything back here, you're going to end up with different routes. So you want to actually measure that off and, uh, you know, maybe not cut in the dead center. But uh, don't forget to put this on uh, before you plug it in uh, because this is another heat shield that you want to put where it, where it actually goes to the airbag, uh, the closest to the exhaust. Uh, this will shield the uh, airline from the exhaust. All right. We got the airbags done. I just wanted to kind of show you here. Uh, this is where I actually installed the uh, traders. I brought it out here, and uh, last time I hooked this trailer up, uh, that ball was well below. Right now, I've got uh, I've got about 20 pounds in the bag, so obviously that's made a big height difference. Um, so. Uh, a little bit later today, I'm gonna run and go grab a uh, thing of gravel. I've already took it out for a ride at like uh, eight pounds. Uh, you can tell a marked difference just in uh, just in driving it around, uh, just with even just the bare minimum air. Uh, the rear end doesn't flop around as much, especially with no load. So I'm pretty happy with it without a load, and I think it's gonna do really well when I do have it loaded, um, which I'll do here. Uh, in just a little bit, I'll go grab a load of gravel and we'll see how that goes. I just kind of want to show you from the side. You can definitely tell that uh, the stance is a bit higher. Um, I don't know if this is going to come through on camera, but uh, that's the airbag. But anyway, let me go, uh, let me go take this for a quick spin and grab a bite to eat and uh, I'll run and grab a load of gravel and we'll see how it does with a load all right we got a load of gravel uh it's about eight thousand pounds of gravel uh, plus the trailer uh coming in right at thirteen thousand pounds load uh, i got 75 pounds in the airlift bags drove like a dream um it's just it basically it keeps the uh the spring level just barely is on the overloads right now um they really helped with the dodge they're really bad with the uh caster angle uh helps keep the front end uh, i'm actually going to hook this to the fifth wheel in another video more than likely and uh actually measure how much more weight it's putting on the rear um i really didn't notice a lot of, of uh, extra tire deflection or anything it worked out great i'm just going to kind of give you a walk around there you can see the spring it's just now touching the overload um, the truck's sitting just slightly with the rear end maybe up a degree <clears throat> the trailer's sitting nice and level um, this is what we just went and got overall I'm real happy uh, Again, I just, uh, I ended up doing the ports in the back of the bed. I can see the value in having a, uh, an auto system rather than having to fill these. I've got one of these on one side and one on the other. Um, pretty much as soon as I have time, I'm going to convert this to a single pump uh, system, either by the Schrader valve or actually get a compressor pump. More than likely, I'll probably go with like a wireless system or something that I can control remotely. It's going to be a pain to uh, adjust pressures uh, every time I do a load or, or, or do anything. Uh, I use this truck to haul garbage off. 
uh, tow the fifth wheel and, and tow this this uh, dump trailer. So it'd be a lot easier if I was just able to select what pressure I needed. Overall, though, I'm really happy with the system. Uh, don't have any leaks. Um, and like I said, right now it's 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 under load, and everything worked great. Is a lot more pleasurable drive. I would say that I probably heard more road noise as far as bumps, uh, but actually the feeling of the road, um, a lot of it has went away. It was a it was a fairly comfortable ride, even with this full load. Anyway, thanks for watching the video, and we'll see you on the next one. Um, please subscribe. Please like. Uh, if you have anybody that might be interested in airbags, uh, give it a share. Hopefully, this helps somebody else out during their install. Uh, and I'll probably do be, be doing more videos when I install the uh, uh, the pressure control system. And also, I'm going to do another video for the loading, uh, wheel loading, weight distribution of the fifth wheel, just to make sure I'm not uh, crazy outside of spec uh, on the rear end.